Hello, this is Maria Canals Barrera. I've played Teresa on Wizards of Waverly Place, Connie Torres in Camp Rock, as well as voicing Hawk Girl on the Justice League, Paulina in Danny Phantom, Sunset Boulevardez in The Proud Family, as well as many, many others. And you're watching In Conversation with Amber the Fangirl. Hi everybody, Amber here. Welcome back to In Conversation with ATF. My guest today is a guest I've wanted on my podcast for so long. I am so excited today. Um, you may know her as the voice of Shaira Hall. If I did pronounce that correctly, because I don't want to do what I did with Carl Lumbly and pronounce John Jones completely wrong. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, so Shayera Hall in uh, Justice League and Justice League Unlimited, also known as Hawk Girl, so one of the original seven Justice League members. How cool is that? Um, Shelly Sandoval in Static Shock, uh, Sunset Boulevardes in The Proud Family, and also The Proud Family Louder and Prouder. Sophia Otero in Scooby Doo and the Monster of Mexico, Ellen Yindel in Batman The Dark Knight Returns Parts 1 and 2. Oh my god, it just goes on and on. So many. Uh, Therese Antonia in Clifford the Big Red Dog, Paulina in Danny Phantom, Dr. Trudy in Pound Puppies, Rio Morales in Ultimate Spider Man, uh, Pilar in Madagascar A Little Wild, and multiple cartoons including Generator Rex, Handy Manny, Special Agent Oso, and so forth. Uh, in live action, you may know my guest from Wizards of Waverly Place, where she played the mother of Selena Gomez's character. Alex Russo, Teresa Russo, and then in Camp Rock, where she played the character um, um, who is Demi Lovato's mom in the film, Connie Torres. I can't remember what's the name of Demi's character in Camp Rock. I feel really bad for not being able to remember. Um, it, her name is um, Mitchie. Mitchie. Mitchy, so the mother mm -hmm. of Mitchy Torres. Okay, and also my guest has been in stuff like Fuller House, uh, Key West, which is where she made her debut, uh, Twenty One Jump Street, Murder She Wrote, and so many more shows. Excellent. My Excellent. <laughs> and and uh, concerning voiceover, currently I'm I'm voicing Dora the Explorer's grandma, Abuela, <laughs> which is a blast what? because she she's just like Dora. She's <laughs> She's an adventurer, and that's how why Dora gets it. So, and I'm really enjoying that. It's it's a preschool kind of like really young um, reiteration of Dora again, and it's so beautifully animated. And I love my character. And there's music, and the writing is really so wholesome and inspiring and beautiful, which is the only thing really young kids should be exposed to: yeah. fantasy, love imagination animals friendships songs and it's i just really i'm really enjoying it like even more than i thought i would and i don't know if it's because it also reminds me of when my girls were younger and how important those early animated shows are to a young child's imagination but i'm, I'm really loving the new dora well I never knew that. That's the first I'm hearing of that. Thank you so much for telling me. We're going to talk about that as well, if we can. Um, well, you're probably wondering at home who my guest is. It is the absolutely amazing, absolutely legendary. I don't know what else to say. She's amazing. Oh, my gosh. It's Maria Canals Barrera. Hi. Yay. Hey. <laughs> Thank you so much, Amber. You're welcome. Oh my gosh, that's taken me. That has taken me by surprise that you're in the new Dora the Explorer uh, show. That is wow. Is it? Has it been released yet? I don't know. I've not really been yeah. keeping up with it. Yes, oh, it's okay. on uh, Nickelodeon, P Peacock. Um, I have to. If you look it up, you'll you'll see um, where it's streaming, and there's yeah. so many uh, streamers and channels and. I have to memorize everything that I'm on and where it's at when people ask me so they can watch it. And I'm like, yeah, not a hundred. I was going to say, yeah, because I'm having a look now. Cause yeah, it, it's a, it's going to be airing in the UK on a, uh, on a, kids tv block called milkshake which we've had over here for about over 20 years it's on channel five in the uk so that's where the, all the viacom nick jr stuff usually airs because viacom brought out channel five a good few years back so it usually they share all their shows got it got it great mm -hmm. yeah now 
I have never met someone who has known both Kevin Conroy and Selena Gomez as well as Demi Lovato. So I'm talking with someone very special here. Um, (laughs) Of of course, we've got to start off with the DC Animated Universe. Now, you were Hawk Girl. And of course, I've spoken to some of your co-stars and they're so nice and friendly. And like, you are nice and friendly as well. Like just, you guys are just so awesome. Now, I've got to ask, Recording as an ensemble, I, there is a picture online of you guys at a recording mm-hmm. session. I can't remember mm-hmm. who took it. It might have been on, on Phil Lamar's camera, but um, I'll have to dig it up. But like, what was it like to record as an ensemble with all of these with these people? Oh, it was incredible. It was it was so exciting. And you know, I had only done a couple of shows, so um, I didn't realize just how unusual it is to get the group of actors in the same room together. Usually you record on your own in a recording booth or studio. Um, So it was something that our director, Andrea Romano, really tried to make happen and succeeded in getting all of us together. And you know, it's our job to make it alive and real with just our voices, no matter what. But when you have the other actor there and you can see them and there's that energy in the room of human beings with you, and the fact that you play a team so there's that connection already in, written in the story. It's just an, an, another element of energy and excitement. And I love that. I think we were very privileged to be able to actually record almost every episode with several members of the show present. Yeah, I was going to say, because you did an episode of Static Shock, which also Phil Mar did, and Jason Marsden was in it. And there was multiple episodes of Justice League where it would have Batman co-stars. So I think Arlene Sorkin did a few episodes as Harley Quinn and stuff like that. So it's like it's all in a big circle of people all working on like the sort of same shows. So that's really cool. And of course, Andrea. Oh, my gosh. What a soul. She's absolutely, oh, my gosh, amazing. What is it like to work under her direction? Well, it was wonderful. It was a pleasure. She's a very uh, emotionally intelligent person. So she really knows how to deal with actors and she knows how to talk to them, which is a separate skill to voice direction that she, I believe, has, which makes everything even more cohesive and harmonious and joyful. So, you know, it's important for the actor to feel relaxed and to trust their instincts and their instrument. And she really was great at facilitating that you know she's very smart she's a lot of fun um it was wonderful it was really wonderful that's so cool um i found said photo uh susan posted it a while back it's this one that's where we're all oh yes we did that in the lobby of uh the warner brothers studio was where we recorded wow over 20 over 20 years ago and that was I'm so glad we took that photo because we tried to look like our characters and it was, and I think we succeeded. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I, I love it because uh, as I can see in the photo, I'm going to have to display it on the screen. Just put it here or here, whichever yeah. direction I'm facing. Um, but yeah, it's, I, I can literally see, you know, just Carl like kneeling down and then Kevin looking really serious and then, you know, Michael <laughs> looking really chill. I just, I just love it. You, you guys must have had so much fun doing that and then of course I think it was just this um December no no hang on I've got I've got my data wrong I'm so sorry um you guys had a reunion together again I'm trying to find the photo because when I talk about these photos I love to put them on screen so people know what I'm referring to yes Um, of course but yeah you all had a reunion at Michael Rosenbaum's house I believe if yes. I, am I, am I, yeah, 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 because I'm, I'm just going through now. Here it is. Yeah, so you all went to Michael's house and you all celebrated um Kevin Conroy's life. So um all you guys were there. I don't think Carl was there. I know Will Friedel and his wife were there. Andrea Romano was there. Um, yes. And uh, Gary was there. I can't remember how to pronounce his last name. It's like Miranel. I think that's how you say it. I can't, I I can't think remember. So. I, feel, I feel really bad. The problem was just 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 league. Yeah. Um. So you guys all. So what exactly did you, did you do at that sort of little gathering? Did you like? Did you record any any material, or did did you just come together just to celebrate Kevin? We came together to remember Kevin. We watched some episodes, and we reminisced and told stories about the past and the fun we had and how special Kevin was. And it was really nice. It was, um, we got caught up with each other. 
it gave us some closure, you know, when we lost a member like that. I mean, yeah. I know that we, there's something, it's really interesting because Obviously, we were actors, but there is such an appreciation for the show, the history of the show, the comic book fans and what the show represented, that we feel an extra appreciation, a gratitude, a responsibility, almost like, wow, that hasn't escaped any of us because we're always reminded that we got to be part of something that meant so much to so many people to this day. So there's this like weight of, wow, for me, especially, I can speak for myself, but I feel like with the other members too, there is a sense of, can you believe it? We were so blessed to be part of this and people still come up to us every day. Lovely people like Amber want to talk to us. Fans come uh, up to us at Comic Cons and make lines, long lines, <coughs> excuse me, to meet us, to talk to us, to tell us about how much of the show, how well written it was, how they're showing it to their children, how it, it, I mean, it's just really incredible what art can do, the longevity of it, starting with our brilliant writers, well, before that, with the comic book creators, the creators of these characters, and the writing from the comic books that um, Stan Berkowitz was saying that, you know, so much of it is just taken from the pages of the comic books. Like he said, you know, we thank you for loving our writing, but a lot of it was totally inspired to a great degree uh, from the comic book. And it's just this team effort and um, Bruce Tim and his vision and the, the animation is so beautifully done and, I think it was really well cast. I love our cast. Yeah. And so I, agree. I think that we have this, like, we're in awe a little bit about what we got to be a part of. And we're just, we were just talking about that and uh, just feeling grateful. And even though Kevin has passed, we were grateful that he was part of the team and that he was so incredible. It was, it was a wonderful time at, at Michael's house. Yeah, it must have been, and very bittersweet as well. I just, what what what, re what really saddens me is that before Kevin's death, we over here in the UK, we don't tend to have a lot of voice actors at Comic Con. So we, I don't. Have you ever done a Comic Con in the UK before, Maria? No, I would love to. I have I was not. Good to say, we we need to have like a proper Justice League, like maybe you and Susan and George Newburn, maybe like, it's just, why did not, why didn't it happen before? Like you guys, you would have loved it. You know, I think there was some talk of it and then COVID happened mm -hmm. and uh, it kind of put a stop to obviously that kind of travel. But I think now that things are better, you know, I know for a fact, cause we've talked about it, that Susan, myself, um, George Newburn, um, um and michael phil, phil and i i think and phil yeah. i think we would all love to to go to um to a comic-con in the uk and meet our fans over there i think it would be a wonderful experience so uh would we, we, we would just need the invitation and um if they would just call our booking agent i think um which is celeb works for susan and myself and and um george i think we would totally agree to it Mm, yeah yeah and um unless i'd have to come well, when i come out to la in march I just have to come and see you all up we can go for a, we'll go for a nice uh, meal out somewhere but honestly yeah just it's, it's just so wonderful i mean I, actually i've got to ask because you did go back about um uh parents showing kids like the justice league cartoons uh you're yeah. a mom yourself aren't you you've got two daughters yeah. um I have two daughters Yes. Yeah, I, I love though. Like they they were born like it's kind of in between. Like I think your first daughter was born two thousand and three, your second two thousand and five, and there's me yeah. being born in two thousand and four. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, that is so cool. And you know, I had both my daughters during the four years that we recorded Justice League. Ooh, that's another reason why it's so special to me, because it was honestly. It was honestly an answer to prayer. And I've told this story before because it's just amazing um, how things happen. And I don't think it's a coincidence. Um, I really, w we wanted to start a family. We'd been married four years, my husband and I. And I was like, gosh, I would love to get 
a great voice part because I can be pregnant and I can work as an actress and I can be pregnant out to here and still have a wonderful, get to be an actress and go to a wonderful voice job. And I got Hot Girl. So we started a family, got pregnant right away with the first one. And then two years later, we, we wanted the second one. I got pregnant right away, thank God, with the second one. And it was all during the four years of recording Hot Girl. I got to do some on-camera work pregnant, which was a surprise, like Curb Your Enthusiasm. And uh, that was fun. And I did a pilot pregnant, which was this, the spinoff of um, what was supposed to be the spinoff of a show with Selena, where I played her mom that didn't get picked up. It was a spinoff of Lizzie McGuire that didn't get picked up. And I was pregnant during that too. But really the jobs that I got to do was all Justice League when I, when I was expecting. And it was, it was a wonderful experience to, to have that steady work, wonderful work and get to have my children and be, you know, comfortable and working. It was just, and I have such sweet memories, you know, in every way about the Justice League. Tremendous yeah. blessing in my life. Wow. So you did those sessions like, you know, when you were you were having you were having your talk that it's just like, so you turn up the sessions and like there's you and you're just like, wow. Wow. And just like I was gonna I was gonna say, like, have your daughters like grown up with your shows? Have they been to any recording sessions? Have they met any oh, of the cast? Members? They've been well, they've been to um I was going to say something funny uh, when you know being very pregnant. Andre Andrea would help me like do my my hot girl cries and war, you know, my yells and <laughs> she'd help me like you know practice for when you're giving birth. You know, you're pregnant. It's going to be like a big deal. <laughs> and uh, whenever I feel vulnerable and sweet and princessy, she'd say, "Come on, she's a hawk. She's a hot girl's a warrior." So I would summon my my mama strength, my grizzly bear strength, and. So we use the pregnancy too in the direction, which is really terrific because she's amazing that way. But yes, my daughters um, love the show. Of course, they've seen it and they love it and they appreciate it. And it's, I always love to say, you were there. You were there when I recorded that episode. <laughs> you were in my belly. You were there. And that's kind of a cool thought, <laughs> even though it freaks them out. But um, <laughs> um, they, they have been to, um, let's see, They've they haven't been in the booth when I've recorded other things, but you know my younger daughter is actually a voice actress now on the side. She's oh, in really? college. She booked a beautiful uh, game um, that called for a sweet, tender voice, that, and she got it right away. I mean, she just signed up with my agent, and she got it. And she because she's wow. so she has such a sweet voice, and she's a great actress. My younger daughter, and so she's doing that. Um, on the side while she's in co in college at wow. Pepperdine. And so um, I think that's really fun. So, uh, and my older daughter's a rock and roll singer and actress, and um, she's also a screenwriter. But the younger one who's in college, she's studying like marketing and business. And so she she enjoys voice acting, mm -hmm. um, but right now she's, she's going to school. So yeah, so, you know, and my husband's an actor too. And so we all really appreciate the art of, of not just acting, but also voice acting, because it's a challenge to make everything come alive with just your voice. And it takes a lot of imagination and using your whole instrument. Even yeah. though you can't see us, we use it. There's a lot of emotive stuff going on. And uh, sometimes I have to watch it because I use my hands and, and I don't want to hit the mic. But yeah. It's a it's a great fun thing to get to do VO that as well as on. Awesome. Wow. Okay. Got to pleasure. I've got to ask this now. I've really got to ask this now because it is playing on my mind. Have any of your daughters ever met any of the other Justice League voice actors? Oh, of course. Oh yes. Oh, hey. <laughs> oh yes. They they hung out with um with George and Susan, especially my older daughter. And yes, oh, they've met all of them. Oh my god. I am. I am. Wow, I am so <laughs> wow. They that went is to like... some Comic Cons uh, with me across oh, America, wow. and uh, they loved it. They were. I remember when uh, Bridget was younger, when she came to the Denver one, she was really moved to see all the fans and how much, how emotional they would get because you know, Aww. for myself, you know, I because I wasn't 
a big part of two or three major iconic shows at the same time and unaware of it until a few years later, just how important those shows were. Justice League, Wizards of Waverly Place, um, Camp Rock, you know, especially Wizards and Justice League, you know, they overlapped. So a lot of my fans, when they found, found out that I was the mother in Wizards and also Hawkgirl, they really were like, surprised and they share that with me and and they just they get really emotional because it was such a big part of their childhood and I I'm very touched and very appreciative of what I got what I had a chance to be part of for them by this blessing of getting to be an actress in two shows that meant so much to them so I remember like she was like mama these people love you so much they you meant so much to them, mom. And she would, she cried. She was touched by their emotion. And I wonder sometimes, I wonder if that had something to do with her wanting to be an actress, you know, because she sees how important and influential and wonderful being a part of this business is. And she, she really loves it. She's even more creative than I am in that she's a writer as well. And so yeah. she's writing her own pilot for herself because she's so wow. smart. Wow. Yeah, she took UCLA extension courses in screenwriting and she just loves it. And, you know, nowadays you really have to create your own things because it's just so incredibly, I don't want to say more difficult because it's also, there are more opportunities, you know, with the, with the internet where you can put your own stuff out there and you can meet other people more easily, like you and I are meeting and getting to talk. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so it's just really a, an exciting time and I love to see how inspired she is. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Right, before we move on to a little bit of Wizards of Waverly Place, I've got to ask uh, about chemistry with, obviously, Kevin Conroy. Like, I mean, I think I, I did ask, I have asked this to, I think it was, I think it was Susan I asked this to, and, yeah, and Phil, because they were both last Comic-Con he did. Um, Of course, like, did his death come as a shock to you? Did you realize he was sick, or like what what happened? If if you if you don't if you don't mind talking about it, if you yeah. don't, well, just let me know. I didn't I didn't know um, the severity of his of his illness. I, you know, I really respect people's privacy, and we're not like, you know, super close where I yeah. would know. I think and and Andrea uh, Andrea Romano knew because they are very close friends. Our director, and so. She was the one that called me and let me know that he had passed. And um, so I did not know. And it was a shock because, you know, you always hope somebody gets better. So I think, it, you know, people that even knew about his illness were, were shocked that that he didn't get better, you yeah. know. And so, not... yeah, it was um, it was a surprise. Yeah, because I remember he was supposed to do a virtual Galaxy Con thing and then he ended up cancelling it. And Andrea said to me, oh, yeah, he was feeling under the weather, um, but he's he's feeling a lot better now. And then he started cancelling Comic-Cons. I was like, this could be more serious than I thought. So I kind of thought there is something going on. So yeah. it kind of yeah. came as a shock to me. It kind of didn't. But nonetheless, like I, along with everyone else, it was awful. I'm still saddened and shocked about it, really. Yeah, like I said, he will be missed. I mean, the fans really, yeah. all, all over Twitter, now X, the fans were just so, so sad about it. And I mean, they loved him. He was an amazing, amazing voiceover actor. He was so good. Just iconic. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. And also, um, Phil Lamar, of course, Green Lantern and Hawkgirl have that sort of special friendship in Justice League, Justice League Unlimited. So, yeah, tell me a little bit about Phil. I, I, I so want to know the scoop. <laughs> <laughs> that was a lot of fun. Phil is so talented, so smart, a real comic book fan himself, a terrific actor and voice actor, total professional. Uh, we had so much fun letting the because we like each other as people so so then when they made us you know uh when they shipped us and we were starting to get those sparks <laughs> and fall in love, that was so fun so phil and i had a great time and it was so well written and i mean i remember when i was first reading those episodes where the sparks were starting to fly and then when he takes my mask off and he says i'm a man and you're a woman like, you know, that's the bottom line and there's chemistry here, you know, and I'm like trying to fight it. Uh, 
<laughs> it was so well done. Um, we had a great time. And it was a very important part of of uh, the Justice League, that romantic chemistry. It was it was great. It was very cinematic and beautifully done. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Honestly, I think it's such a beautiful show. I've not finished watching it, but um, all I do know is that, well, from what I've seen so far, it is a really absolutely amazing show. Like, nothing can top it at all. Wow. Wow. Mm. Yeah. I, see, I, I agree. It's one, it's one, it's so well done. It, it, again, to be part of something so beautifully animated, so well written, so that means so much to so many people is continues to be a tremendous blessing. I mean, we still go to these comic cons where people want to talk about the show and love it. And, and we're so proud to be part of it. And it's been 20 over 20 years and it's, it's amazing. The longevity of something, you know, when it's something is well done and, uh, and something like the beauty of art is timeless. And yeah. this, this, this show is terrific. And the, the theme music, the opening credits, isn't the music fantastic? I know, yeah. It's a beautifully composed, honestly. I Every time like I hear it, I stand up straighter and I remember I'm a warrior. I'm I'm part of this. It's, it's just <laughs> terrific. It just gives you goosebumps just how well composed it is and just conducted. And oh my gosh, like it's just it, everything that the DC animated universe just touches just turns to gold. It's beautiful. Yes. Yes, I agree. Thank mm. you. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, at the top of my screen, it says um, our remaining meeting time is six minutes. So I thought before I restart okay. the meeting, let's talk a little bit about the do, 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 the Explorer. So, of course, you're, as you said at the start of the uh, of the episode, you're Dora's grandma. Well, I mean, I, That's don't right. I play Abuela. Abuela. I play Abuela. And Abuela. Uh, she's just like Dora, mm -hmm. very young. In her spirit, the the initial adventurer, and that's why Dora is like that. She yeah. sings, she cooks, she <laughs> loves to travel. She's a wonderful character. I'm really enjoying it. Oh, well, that's good. Yeah. Well, I had a look at my MDB and it said something about you also being Benny's abuela, Benny the Bull. I don't know. Yeah. What? Oftentimes when we uh, do voice work, we'll, we'll play other characters. Ah, right. Okay. Because it was only crediting you for Be Benny's abuela. Is it, is it abu yeah. ab abuela? Is that abuela? It's I, abuela. But you hit, abuela, it's abuela. Abuela. Yeah, but you hit the B real gently. So it's abuela, not abuela. abuela. Yeah, you hit it gently, like say abuela. Abuela. Perfect. Hey, because I've got um, <laughs> my cousin's Spanish and I I went to Madrid like twice last year. So I'm kind of building up on my Spanish. So honestly, That's awesome. Awesome. no, like Madrid was the first like abroad country I've ever been to. And honestly, it's just I love it. it was, it's so good. Um, yes, yeah, I've I'm been so there. I worked there. I loved it. Yeah. And I, and oh my Barcelona. God. Barcelona is phenomenally beautiful. Oh my gosh. What was it like to work there? What did you do over there? Oh, it was great. I did a movie called Imagining Argentina oh. with uh, Emma Thompson and Antonio Banderas. And it was oh about... Oh my gosh! Uh, yeah, we shot a month in Madrid and a month in Buenos Aires. And it was just wonderful. Um, oh. A great experience. And I got to really be, you know, immersed in the Spanish language because... You know, when your parents come from a different country, at least for me, Cubans are very proud. You have to speak Spanish at home. So I would speak Spanish at home. But when you're born and raised in America, English is your dominant language. You go to school yeah. in English, you watch TV in English. So, um, so, you know, of course, English becomes the more dominant language, like I said. So even though I spoke Spanish, I wasn't as fluent as I was in English. So being immersed in Madrid for a month, and then Buenos Aires for a month was very exciting. And I got to, and, and completely different accents, yeah. which is a great challenge, especially for an actor. I have a good ear for accents. And um, like, I can understand people. I don't immediately get thrown and not understand what they're saying just because they have an accent. I immediately adjust. And so it was, it was great fun. And I got to practice my Spanish and it was awesome. Well, like when good. I was in Madrid, you know, um, the Spanish is more, um, more staccato you know and then in in when in argentina it has this song to it like and so the girl would say 
she would knock on my trailer and she'd say, Maria, que eres un yogur de frutilla. And I'm like, well, what the heck is frutilla? And because in for Cubans we say fruta, we say we say it's strawberry, fresa. So I was like, what the heck is frutilla? Because you know there are different words. Um, but I immediately started at understanding this, the rhythm and the song of the. Yeah. So yeah, so when we play different characters, we have to obviously make it different. So, like I don't know if you notice on Justice League, I play lots of different characters. I play the in War Worlds on that old lady who's like go go. She's like a an alien, and she's like rooting for for um, is it Drago, Drag Drag Draga, or so. she's she's like you know she's she's rough and she talks like this with a little bit of New Yorker in her, and she's like yeah. rough and dirty. she's dirty and rough. So then you have to. So as Dora's grandmother, I, I summoned a lot of my own mother and my own grandmother. But then as Benny's grandmother, she's much she's much more of your traditional grandmother. And there's a little bit of crackle in her voice. She's a little bit older and she talks with a little crackle. And yeah. and those are so fun for me to, to play different different voices. So Wizards of Waverly Place, Maria. Now, I am going to have to say, unfortunately, it is not a show I grew up with. I didn't watch it. I think it was because it aired like around 2007 eight-ish and like I would have been yeah. three or four you were too young you were like my kids it was like my kids got more into of course they knew everybody and they came to set but they didn't get it until they were a little older because it's, it's for 11 12 13 year old 14 year olds it's like it's not for like little ones and you were tiny when it first came out yeah I think it still did reruns like years later but I didn't yeah. I, I, mean, I didn't really watch them I suppose um so I don't know much about the show um but what I do know is that there is a, a reboot coming out a sequel series that's just it's been really greenlit. A, it's that... really a, a sequel pilot a sequel pilot yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I'm not sure can you say are you involved Oh, is it well, NBA? I don't I don't think I'm at liberty to say too much. I can just say that everything that's out there is true and super exciting. I mm. mean, it's I'm super excited about it. I think the fans are going to just they've been wanting Wizards back for so long. And uh, I think it's I think it's going to be great. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I might, I might have to give it a watch, actually. Yeah. Um, how did you get cast on Wizards of Waverly Place? Because you, you, you've gone from, like, working with Kevin Conroy to working with Selena Gomez, who's, like, a massive singer now. That is just... How, how did you get the... How, what happened? What, did, what well, was your audition process like? Well, most of my work has been uh, on camera. Um, mm -hmm. And then um, when you sign with a theatrical agency and a commercial agency, they have a voiceover department and they wanted to sign yeah. me for voiceover as well. And so then I was like, yeah, how exciting, how wonderful to do voice as well. So then I started booking voice work, which is terrific. But really, I started with, you know, theater, TV, film. So yeah. it was one of the many um, opportunities I got to audition. And it was like I said in um, previously that. The audition was for a spinoff of Lizzie McGuire, which was another Disney Channel show with Hilary Duff. And um, the spinoff was with another character. And then they they wanted to have the character have a little sister because they yeah. had found Selena. So they wanted Selena to be this little sister. And uh, I was cast as her mom. And uh, it was a lot of fun, uh, but the pilot did not get picked up. That's the one I did pregnant, <laughs> but you couldn't see. I wasn't showing it. Um, it did not get picked up. But then um, this magic show came about and uh, they brought me back in uh, and I auditioned again and um, to be Selena's mom in this show, which is a whole different character, different kind of chemistry. And I got it and we did a pilot and it was called The Amazing O'Malley's. And then they changed it up and they called it Wizards of Waverly Place. But it was the same concept about a magical family. But they changed the, the character of the husband. They added another son. Uh, they changed the setting. We, we now were at a substation rather than a magic shop. We had a sandwich restaurant. And, um, and I love that. I love that, that Disney retools things rather than just say, oh, forget it. Because we as actors do a lot of pilots and we put a lot, you know, the writer, first of all, puts a lot of work into it. And 
they make this show and then they decide whether the network decides whether or not they're going to pick it up to series. And many times they just say no or yes, and it gets developed. But many times it's no and they just move on. Well, what I like about what Disney Channel did is they retooled it. They changed things up. They they didn't give up on it. And look, lo and behold, it became one of their best triple Emmy winning hits. So that was a wonderful experience. And uh, it was great because early on, you know, you can feel when something is well cast and well written, obviously, if you're part of it. And I, I felt that early on. And, you know, the kids on the show who are now adults, obviously, but yeah. David Henry, Selena Gomez and Jake T. Austin were so talented and different. Um, and the chemistry was so good. It was just a wonderful experience. And I knew that it was going to do well. And and it sure did. And of course, you know, it was no surprise how you know Selena is extremely talented uh, actress from the get go and a singer. Yeah. Uh, but especially her acting chops at that age were very well developed. And uh, that that's so great because if you're on a quote unquote kids show and all the kids are super talented, especially your lead. Um, but in many ways, it was an ensemble show. David Henry, you know, got a lot of great stuff to do as well as Selena. And so did Jake. You know, the writers were really terrific in giving great storylines to each character, even the, uh, the parents, you know, David Deluise and I weren't just the thankless parent roles on a kid's show that say good night and eat your dinner. We got to do a lot of fun stuff. We got to be, go under spells and be different characters. And yeah, it was just a wonderful experience. And then to get such love from the fans and recognition, like I said, with having won three Emmys for outstanding children's programming, it was a great experience. I just think like it all connects. I've just noticed a connection because Jake T. Austin, uh, sorry, Austin, not Aus Austin. That just sounds like mm, scary. Um, so Jake T. Austin, um, he was actually the original voice of Diego in Dora the yeah. Explorer, Dora's Cousin. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's right. It's and then, <laughs> I, I, and then now you're in the Dora reboot, and then he voiced uh Blue Beetle in Justice League action, which Kevin Conroy was Batman in. So it all connects. It's like all full circle. Yes, and when I was Rio Morales, I was his mom when I voiced that part. He voiced um the the Spider-Man character, the Miles the kid. Morales. Right, Miles Morales. Oh so God. that that was so fun. So yeah, it's wonderful to see how projects and actors we get to overlap and reunite and that's really funny because he was so good as Diego, wasn't he? I remember he was doing yeah. that while he was doing Wizards. Or he just I finished doing that when he was doing Wizards. I don't remember how much it overlapped, but he was so up, good in that. And I grew up watching him. It's just so, so cool, honestly. And just, I've got to, do you keep in touch with anyone from the show? I do. I do. In fact, I recently, I don't know how recent, it's been several months already. I think maybe it's been, it's probably been like, it's going to be a year ago, but maybe not that long ago, where I did the Wizard podcast with uh, David DeLuise and Jennifer Stone. Mm -hmm. um, yes, we keep in touch. David Henry, did, my husband and I did a start in a little project that he directed. You know, he's a wonderful director and writer as well as an actor. And mm -hmm. Father, he's a, an amazing, amazing person, David Henry. Um, Jake, I last I texted him, I still haven't heard back. Uh, so... Um, I know he's really busy. Um, you know, he's young and working and but I did get to um see him at David Henry's wedding and I saw Selena there and it was wonderful to, for all of us to be together at David's wedding. I was gonna ask you, do you keep in touch with Jake or Selena at all? Yes. Yes, Jake Jake, I'm I'm it's been when was the last time I talked to Jake? It's been a couple of years. Um mm -hmm. And I, he lives in New York. It's harder to, you know, to see him. Yeah. Can you see, um, can you see, still see me? Cause I got a call coming in here. Yeah, I can still see. I can put it on hold. I, I was going to say, cause like Selena now is like massive singer. And just massive like... singer. Last time I saw Selena was at her concert. Um, and she was amazing. And we went with friends and it was terrific. And, um, yeah, so I'm, I mean, 
it's incredible for me to think that she's 31 and David Henry's 34 and I don't know how old Jake is late twenties, maybe I, it's, it's, I can't believe it. It's incredible that they are not just adults, but like in their thirties. Now the older, the older kids, I, time goes by so fast. People say it, you're like, yeah, but it really does. Especially when you work with like, or when you have kids. Yeah. It's like, oh my gosh, right. Right after middle school in the States, we call it middle school. It used to be called junior high, the middle grades. Um, Right after middle school, mm -hmm. a, a father who was also a teacher told me, you're going to feel it go by super fast right after middle, right during middle school. It just goes, yeah. whoop. their childhood is behind them. And they're now it's like looking forward to the teen and adult years. And it's just like super goes by fast. So really enjoy them in those elementary school years. Yeah. Um, because it it does it just goes by so fast it's incredible it's incredible yeah yeah definitely I agree and just like uh do you keep in touch with anyone from uh, Camp Rock maybe Demi Lovato maybe or... I text it, I text with Demi it's been um let's see I last texted with her just a couple a few months ago oh my and um, gosh. I'm just so proud of their success um their hard work and success even with all the incredible ups and downs and challenges that they've had I'm so proud that that they're fighters you know and you have to be in this business um and they're just so talented and excellent that they they get they the people that that have something to give and don't give up trying to give it succeed yeah that's why i say i say to young you know younger people that ask me about you know being in this business and how to do it i say well, first of all you have to love it you have to love the art form and you have to feel like you are not only skilled at it but willing to do the hard work to be able to gift it to others you have to believe in it in yourself and you will find an audience there will be an audience for you and you have to just know that and keep going because there's going to be not only with the rejection, but personal issues that come up, health issues, challenges with, you know, the demons in this business, drugs, alcohol, um, mental health challenges that we all are susceptible to, just being human, you know, and never giving up on, on, be, on developing, honing, trusting in those skills that you have in that talent and continuously getting back up and putting it out there and that you will succeed. You will not fail because you don't give up and that's failing, giving up. Yeah. So I'm very proud of all the kids that I've worked with that are now thriving, successful, talented adults. And, and that's what you have to do in order to continue. And if they don't want to do it, if there's an actor that's like, you know what, this isn't for me, more power to you that you know that and you, and you want to do something else. Because just because you started out doing something doesn't mean that if you change your mind, you fail. That's not true at all. I have lots of friends and people that I've worked with that were like, you know what? I want more control. I want to know where I'm going to be in 10 years. I don't want to have to deal with the, the ups and downs of this business, the craziness. And he's like, you know what? I'm going to go to law school. And my friend went to law school and he's like, I want to be either. He's like, I'm going to be at 35. Anyway, he said, I'd rather be a successful lawyer than maybe a successful actor because yeah. it's, it's very precarious. So I said, good for you. And he's much happier. So, you know, it's okay to change your mind, Yeah. Uh, but if you love it and you have to love it, you have to love it like crazy. You have to love the doing of it so much that you'll do it for free because you love it so much. You'll do free theater. You do the Shakespeare festivals for peanuts because you get to do Shakespeare because you love it. You have to love it. Yeah. So this, this, this business, this life, this art is not for everyone. It's for unusual people that are willing yeah. to ride the ups and downs of it all. So anyway, long story long, I'm, I'm just thrilled at the success of my, my colleagues uh, in the, at Disney and um, 
and and in the voiceover work you know yeah Warner Brothers and stuff like that yeah yeah actually speaking of Warner Brothers I've got to bring up Scooby-Doo and the Monster of Mexico do you remember <laughs> oh, recording for that I that do all. that was so fun and again it was one film but people love it and they remember it and it was so much fun um that was with Casey Kasem the iconic yeah actor voice actor dj that was very cool to get to meet and work with him that's so cool yeah they got the whole the, they got the original cast back for that and i think it was another film as well that they did because they got like heather north back as daphne blake and they got velma's original va back uh nicole uh jave back as well like they got all the original vas back so were you in on the session like as an ensemble or uh, I, pres oh, I presume you were because you met Casey Kasem I was because I got to meet him yeah yeah I, I oh my gosh that was so long ago how long ago was that uh that was... I think I believe this film was released in 2003 wow this was before I had my baby this was this yeah well I do remember meeting them and it was incredible and I have the poster with everybody's autograph on it. Oh, wow. That is so cool. Um, yeah. I've got to ask, what was Frank Welker like? Did you get to meet him? I, yes, it was brief, you know. Uh, yeah. It's work. You go and you do the work. Yeah. You don't necessarily go out to dinner every time with people. So, mm -hmm. uh, yes, everybody was really sweet and pleasant. And uh, it was just amazing. I, you, know, you just reminded me of all the things you know, when you read all those credits it was like oh my gosh I didn't realize I'd done so much voice work and oh, no. and not just any gigs but special ones like iconic people that did the originals and um, shows people still talk about Static Shock uh, the original Proud Family there's such affection for um um Danny Phantom oh my gosh I didn't know how much how many people love Paulina and <laughs> that was I so know. fun to do hi Danny to be the spoiled brat oh my gosh at the comic cons I hear this that's why they tell me and they ask me to do her voice and they buy the photo of Paulina and they just love it so yeah. I'm just so grateful that I got to do it so it when I'm reminded of, of all the voice jobs that I've done it makes me feel very confident when I go on my next audition yeah. it reminds me like because they're not super quote-unquote easy to get there's a lot of competition and but you just again if you love it you got to keep going for it and then all of a sudden all these doors start opening and you look back and you realize oh my goodness I've done so much thank you God and it helps you know give you that confidence for the next stuff yeah definitely definitely right Maria, it's time for the big question. All right, I've got to ask you, what inspired you to become an actor? What made you want to become an actor, choose this, essentially choose this career path? I've got to ask. Well, a lot of it is, you know, kind of um, a subconscious kind of inspiration that happens mm -hmm. uh, from, from experiences in life, great stories, great storytellers. And I think it began with my mom. My mom was an amazing storyteller. She would recall her life experiences, especially as a young woman in Cuba when she won that beauty pageant and her trips to the park every Sunday with a new dress that her mom would make for her because my grandmother was a seamstress. Um, the stories that she would tell, she would relive every moment, every time she would tell the story. To whomever she would tell the story, she would do the voices, she would reenact the moments. And I remember just listening to my mom and and absorbing all her great storytelling. Um, I think it was also uh, an escape of, of life when it wasn't so pleasant um, growing up. I think that um, I just couldn't wait to be in the show. I just remember I couldn't wait to to be in the show in, in elementary school. And in eighth grade, I couldn't wait to take drama class. You had to wait till second year of middle school to take it. And I just couldn't wait. And I remember that feeling of reenacting scenes and making people laugh or moving them emotionally. Mostly I enjoyed the laugh, making my, my friends laugh. And it just 
kept snowballing. I, I kept being in all the shows and I got most talented in high school. Ooh. And I got a scholarship to the University of Miami to study theater. And I remember making that adjustment, whether I should, whether this can be a real thing. Because being from Florida at that time, modeling was becoming a thing. Beautiful mm -hmm. models, you know, on South Beach, that was becoming a thing. But it wasn't an actor's town. It wasn't L.A. or New York where an actor would get respect. It was kind of this crazy thing to be an actress. It yeah. was like, so, but I remember thinking, well, do I want to major in something that is safer and I'm skilled at? But when I got the scholarship, uh, an actress told me who was already working professionally, told me, you should audition for the University of Miami a scholarship for theater arts. Mm -hmm. uh, and I said, OK, she kind of encouraged me. And then when I got the scholarship, I'm like, I'm doing this. I'm going to major in theater arts. I'm going to go for it because there's nothing I love more. And it was like that encouragement, that validation you got, you know, you're good. You have something to give. And so I made that switch to this isn't just kind of a crazy dream. This is going to be my vocation. This is something I'm that I'm serious about. And, mm -hmm. and so, um, And so it was a, a, a dream, a skill, a joy, a fantasy that became reality because I pursued it in a real way. And um, and the doors kept opening. I got jobs. I got lots of positive experiences and affirmation. And of course, there was some I didn't get, but I still went for it. Yeah. And um, so I think it was a passion that I always followed, that I that I still enjoy. Yeah. Well, that's good. <laughs> Honestly, oh, I'm so glad like that you found the sort of career path and then you took it and you became Hawk Girl. That's how I know you as. I know you got more <laughs> from Justice League than Wizards of Waverly Place. So, because I'm a cartoon buff right there. <laughs> one of my favorite roles ever yeah. that I've got I to do. Yeah, honestly, I could tell, like, because, like, you know, the stories of you in the booth and stuff and Andrea teaching you, doing a hot girl cry, and you're just thinking, oh, my gosh, like, to be on the, a fly on the wall in those sessions must have been, oh, my gosh, amazing. Must have been it, was, so it was, it was, it was so much fun. I wish you could have been that fly on the wall because you would have loved it. To see us oh, mess yeah. around and make each other laugh and try to, like, break each other's concentration is terrible, but the guys especially would do that. They Aww. would joke with each other in between takes to crack each other up. It was so much fun. Oh, and then you and Susan just sitting on the side, just like, mm, okay, okay, boys, we'll be boys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was a lot of that. A lot of eye yeah. rolling Susan and I would do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is so, so lovely. Well, Maria, thank you so much for appearing on my show. It's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you. My pleasure. Thank you, Amber. You're welcome. Where can we find you on social media? My handle is mm -hmm. at Maria underscore CB. Sweet. I'll get those. Uh, like I'll get, I'll get your social media pages linked in the description. My cheeks hurt from smiling so much. That's how I'm <laughs> trying. I'm trying not to smile, but I look like really serious and sad. But then I got a smile and then my cheeks hurt even more. <laughs> so it's so hard. Um, There we go. OK, I think I can manage. There we go. Um. So, to you at home, thank you so much for watching this episode of In Conversation with ATF featuring the lovely Maria Canales Barrera. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did filming it. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you around. Take care, everyone. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye, and cut. Bye.